Um, hello, I'm Gabriela Barros, and I'm going to be talking about uh, data driven games or the magical and absurd um, work of open database procedural content generation. Um, so, just can I click on things? I can click on this. Okay, so just to um, say a little bit. Um, I am an AI researcher at Model AI. Um, I got a PhD from uh, New York, the New York University um, Summer School of Engineering uh, from NYU, and a master's um, in science from the Federal University of Pernambuco in Brazil, uh, where I live. Um, and I've worked a little bit on uh, ECG, on mechanic generation, um, um, on tutorial generation with uh, Michael Green, Julian Tavetis, and Ahmed Khalifa, a little bit on um, lyrics generation with Marco Shiria, um, and on text generation um, with Ahmed Khalifa and Julian Tavetis. Um, so if you're curious about any of this, I'm going to post this presentation um, afterwards, and there are some links below. Um, but what I'm actually talk one thing to talk about here is uh, data-driven games, um, which are games that use information that is freely available online to generate um, automatically game content in some way. It can be the whole game, it can be just uh, hard choice for characters, it can use um, all sorts of different information, it can just use um, Facebook feeds or uh, newsletter, news, new, new, newsletters, or Twitter feeds, or so on. Um, and some of the most famous examples that you have are uh, Pokemon Go, which used um, the actual topological information of the player to generate the terrain. Um, and also small things like if it was uh, day or night, it would increase or decrease the chances of uh, spawning ghost type Pokemon, for example. Um, there is also where I'm Google with this farm in San Diego which tried to create um, the classic Carmen San Diego style of games inside Google Earth. Um, fun, but very uh, specific. It, it used very specific templates. Uh, beautiful game, though. Um, operator 911 um, lets you play as an emergency operator inside whatever shape you input in the game. Um, and so on. It doesn't necessarily have to be created online, so all this generate the games as you play. Um, it could also generate, for example, board games for Monopoly um, using government data or um, cards for uh, Trumps um, using specific data sets and so on. Um, the idea of data games comes from the idea of using a lot of information to create something new. Um, so it's tightly related to maximalism, not in the sense of um, I'm going to put everything that I can inside this content, but in the sense that you're going to get two different things, um, whether it's a data source and a type of content, and you're going to uh, mix them, just to post them in a way that creates something new, something maybe unexpected. Um, and it's something that you see a lot in music, for example, or in paintings. Um, but why would you want to do this? There is uh, the aspect of the actual data, there's the aspect of the CG um, side, and there is also um, a certain motivation for us as humans. So on the data side, there is a massive amount of content being created um, every day. And some of this content is very easy to uh, interact with, like for example, Twitter feed. You just scroll and you're gonna be stuck there for the rest of your life. Um, but you can also be interested in learning about um, government data or uh, biological research. And it might not be as easy to visualize this information or to interact with it um, if it is in this original source. So by using this information to create some content in a game, uh, in a play of one environment, you can actually be more encouraged to interact with it, to understand it. Um, and it, be, it may become easy to visualize it. So it has some really interesting uh, applications in education, for example. On the other hand, uh, when we talk about PCG, there is always the idea of 
This is you can generate a lot of things. Um, like Kate was mentioning before, you can generate a thousand different um, content, the same type of content, but not all of it is interesting. Um, that said, a lot of manual content that's generated for games um, is based on the real world. So if you go on Steam Workshop, um, you're going to see a lot of maps based on real world location, a lot of characters based on um, actual celebrities or politicians or so on. There is um, an interest for us as, as humans, as players, to interact with things that we know. Um, and using data in, in this sense, using data to source, to seed, um, content generation can help us reach that a little bit more easier. Um, that said, um, an example is Operator 99, um, which lets you play in your hometown, for example. Um, and the map is going to be um, automatically created from that. Um, so you can recognize the, the uh, landscapes and the street, streets and so on. Um, but there is also this aspect, and that, that's where it ties in with this aspect for humans. We really want to believe things that we know um, a little bit of. Um, so in Tumblr, there is this game that people created called the MacCrunch game, where you just go on this website called MacCrunch, and you remove all the locations so you can select any place on Earth, and you click on Go. And it's going to drop you, as in Google Earth, um, in Google Street View, it's going to drop in some random location on, on the planet. Your job is to find the nearest airport. And people actually spend a lot of time playing this for, because it's interesting for them. They can learn um, new things about places that they've never seen. And it's, it's hilarious when you're dropped in a place that is pretty close to an airport, but it's also great when you're dropped in the middle of nowhere in this place. Um, so yeah. Now we, we go back to, we, we already know why we would want to, do, uh, to create a, a data game. So we go back to how we can do it. Um, and to, ex to explain this, I would like to walk you guys over a project that we made. Um, it's called Data Agent. It is a procedurally generated murder mystery uh, data game that uses um, for different sources of information. So it basically lets you choose someone on Wikipedia and the algorithm kills them for you and generate the story uh, around it. So you can interact with things and see places and perhaps have a little bit of entertainment. It was made um, in collaboration with Mike Green, um, Julian Togales, and Antonis Leopis. Um, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of it. So we can have some context. Um, so this adventure was made uh, inputting Mario on the system. So it has this meta narrative where you're a time agent. Um, you work for this. Wow, loud. Okay, good. Um, you work for this time agency. Um, now that there is a time technology, people can go back and forth in time. Criminals go back in time to kill people and impersonate someone that's near them. Um, so your job is to go back go back, figure out who is the criminal, criminal who they are impersonating, and uh, fix whatever time anomalies that may have ar arisen from that. So in this case, by inputting uh, Mario, the game creates the story where um, your suspects are Captain Olimar, Waluigi, and Princess Peach. And you have to travel around places and talk to people and see things that might give you clues as to which one of them is um, the killer. Once you find them and you interrogate them, um, you can compare those notes that you took with um, what they're actually telling you in the interrogation to figure out who is showing some discrepancies, who is telling you something, uh, who is lying to you. Um, so I'm just letting this run a little bit because as you can see, everything in this game, except for the UI, um, was automatically generated. The only thing that we input was Mario, as in the character. Um, and this system was able to figure out people that could be interesting to fill the game with. Um, 
I'm just going to move towards the end. So if I'm, so at the end, when you're interrogating someone, you can compare um, things. Wow, please stop this. Okay. The information that you have with whatever he's saying, and then you find out um, on the positions. Um, so yeah, this is a game. Um, but how do you actually start this? Um, you have two things to take into consideration when you're making a data game. You have to figure out um, where do you start from. You start from the data or from the game design. Are you going to be more faithful to the information that you got first or to whatever um, design decisions that you, you were thinking? Um, so what kind of create content are you going to create? You're going to create a content that is function that's going to affect how you play the game, whether mechanically or uh, narrative-wise, or going to create a content that is merely decorative. Um, so if you were to remove it from the game, it would not decrease um, the experience so much, for example. Um, so when we, when we talk about this game, uh, we started um, from an inspiration side. So we wanted to make something to use um, data in a narrative kind of way. We knew that we wanted to do something with Wikipedia and we tried to find a design that fit that. Um, so we went with inspiration of Carmen San Diego as well. Um, a mystery where we had to find a criminal um, and travel around the world to, to find it. That led to um, the first installment of the Data Agents um, series, uh, which was called Data Adventures, where you just input two characters, um, two Wikipedia articles, and you would find relations between them to fill out the game. So those relations are actually uh, hyperlinks between one article and another. So if you were to, from, to travel on Wikipedia from the first article um, through the hyperlinks, you would reach the second one. Um, and this is a very, very um, data focused game. Um, we didn't change the data to fit the game design much. It was filled out with text um, and images all gathered from the original sources. It wasn't, however, super fun to play. Um, so we ended up involving this with the meta narrative of the murder um, and we created wiki mysteries. Um, so now instead of inputting two people, you would input a victim. And the system would try to find out who would be an interesting suspect. Um, the game became more interesting, but it also became really hard because we were we just changed the data so much without taking into account um, all the problems that it would incur on the game design that we would have um, some really boring mechanics. So, for example, to win the game. As in data game, data agent, you would um, just check on your notes to see what uh, the criminal is saying and compare it with your notes. In this case, you had to fill out this ridiculous table of content saying who was the, crip, the, the culprit and who weren't and why they weren't, what were the um, alibis. And it was really boring. Um, so as we were improving this, we came up with what is the current system. Um, so it's made up of an offline generator and a game client. The generator is actually made in Java, and the game client was made in Unity. Um, so we, it's, it's, uh, it consists of two, two parts. Uh, one that actually uh, selects the information, gathers the information uh, from a local database and online and one that actually parses it and creates the game content. Um, and to do that, we use all sorts of um, artificial intelligence techniques and also um, some tools available, such as Kate Compton's tracery and Michael's uh, Sprightly. Um, so it all starts with one, with one article, um, so in this case, Mario. We could work uh, straight from Wikipedia. But to do that meant that we actually had to parse all the text ourselves. So what we do is work on Dbpedia. Dbpedia is 
uh, semantic um, structure Wikipedia, basically. So it's all seen as a semantic database. Um, and a lot of Wikipedia data, almost all of Wikipedia data is already there. Um, so we query this to find all the information that we need about the victim. Then we query it to find all the information about everyone with up to two degrees of separation from the victim. So everyone that can be accessed um, from one hyperlink or two hyperlinks from the original article. Um, once we have all these people, we run an evolution strategy algorithm um, to find out a set of suspects. So if you're not uh, familiar with an evolution strategy algorithm, the idea is that you have um, a population of solutions and they might, they are all um, different varying degrees of interestingness or usefulness to you. And you keep um, modifying them um, by combining them or mutating them in some way to generate new solutions until you find one that is good enough for you. So in this case, our solutions consist of um, three Wikipedia articles each. And they're measured by how many leads, um, how many things are they have in common among themselves and among them and the victim. So a solution where everyone is um, a game character, for example, would be more interesting than a solution where one of the suspects is a painter, one is a singer, and one is a game character. Um, just because they're more related among themselves. Once we have um, a set of suspects, we can actually start generating um, the game. So for each one of the suspects, we try to find things that are going to be good for filling the game. <clears throat> um, to do that, we do graph search. Um, we try to find a path between the original article and the suspect um, that is diverse in the sense that not all articles are about people or not all of them are about um, locations and so on. Um, and this graphs that we find basically become a tree uh, where we always part from the victim and each leaf is a suspect. Once we have this tree, we can actually start creating um, the objects in the game. So if we find an article about a person, we can create a character. Uh, we find an article about a location, we can create a place. And if we find an article about anything else, we can create an interactable object, such as a book or a photograph or a letter or something that you can see in the game. Um, then the generator exports this um, as a JSON file that can be loaded in the client. We did it, um, create this online. It's not, it's not, the client cannot generate games uh, online because A, it took some time to generate because there was a lot of data, um, especially in the first interactions of this uh, system when we were still experimenting in things. Um, and two, because data often is not meant to be played with. So sometimes you can get things that you don't want in various ways, and I'm gonna go over that in a little bit. But let's just say that sometimes it's nice to curate things so you know what you're getting into. Um, so once you have all the objects, you can start fleshing them out a little bit, giving descriptions uh, for the places and characters, um, getting images for the locations using, in our case, OpenStreetMaps with um, the actual map topological data. Um, everything else we use um, one of three strategies, either sprightly, um, which is made by my MyCook, um, but that does work better for uh, sprite images. And since we're using um, often larger images, we would turn into Wikimedia API or um, a handmade HTML crawler that we get from straight from the HTML um, Wikipedia pages. Um, then we would flush out dialogues using tracery, one dialogue that would um, move the plot forward and one dialogue that would create side branches. And finally, we would add um, constraints to the game in the form of uh, lock and key types of puzzles. Um, and to do that, we use a reference variant. 
um, to check if the game was playable and minimal. Um, so let me come back to, to this to this balance between the days and game sign and the function and the vertex. Um, so when we talk about data versus game design, you can have some content that is, uh, you, have, you can have some generated system that is very focused on the data. So data agent works like that. It didn't transform the data at all. Um, on one hand, that means that we're not adding much um, misinformation. On the other means that data might be super boring to interact with. Um, or you can go the other route and focus a little bit more on the game design. Um, so this is a rogue dream uh, by Mike Cook and Simon Colton. Um, it lets you um, input a noun subject and it would use Google Auto Complete to figure out things that were related positively and negative to it. So, in so for example, if you input kid, um, it would find that kids um, don't like schools, so it would add schools as the enemy. So you'd play as a kid that would uh, avoid school sprites and would eat burgers to be healed, for example. Um, and then we start having these assumptions that we as humans know but don't really um, see often. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you have a function of imperative. So if you go for a very uh, functional type of data, um, we can have something like our uh, civilization generator, where it lets you to um, it let you generate a map for FreeCiv, which is basically a civilization one and two, but open source, um, based on a real location. And then it would create the topological terrain, the, the actual terrain from um, the map and try to add resources based on real audio deposits. Uh, most of that was done with image processing. Um, and then you can have something that's merely decorative, like in World of Warcraft, um, the day and night system uh, previously was uh, this built on real time uh, information. I'm not sure if it is anymore. Um, So if you plot them all um, together, you would have something like this. Um, you can have on one end of the spectrum, very faithful to the data games, um, like Wikirace, for example, that doesn't change the data at all. You are literally playing in Wikipedia. Or um, on the other end, we have data agent, which changes the information completely. You're basically killing a character and putting characters together that don't exist, on locations that are not super related to the characters at times and the whole matter, narrative that is completely fictional. Um, when we go for functional versus decorative, we can also have Wikirace um, as a super functional game. If you remove the actual source, you don't have a game, um, as the source becomes the actual mechanic. Um, in the other end of the spectrum, we could have um, the World of Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft uh, Day and Night System, and also Angelina, I think version three, which would get uh, the backgrounds and images to fill out the game it created. Um, and then there's this all sort of uh, possible ideas that you could have from this. You can create trivia games from Wikipedia, strategy games from um, stats or defined from the units were defined by data. Um, you can create items based on a person's media feed. Um, class based on movies or political horror games with real politicians, which I would really like to see it actually. Um, but yeah, there's an, an infinity of possible information that you can use and a larger sort of data that you can actually create from it. But there are certain things that you should uh, keep in mind. So, mainly, there are legal and ethical issues. and the possibility of creating um, misinformation and bias. So for the legal aspects of it and the ethical ones, um, when you transform information that's freely available in a game, you can act with, you can transform information that, about your people. Um, so for example, when we start making a mystery, we wrote a paper about it, and we thought it would be hilarious if we set the victim as Justin Bieber, 
And we thought it would be great if we set the name of the paper as Who Killed Justin Bieber. So we wrote the paper, we submitted, and then I got a call from the lawyers of the university saying that we shouldn't do that. Um, so we changed it and it ended up killing Albert Einstein's death, which is uh, more uh, less likely to give less likely to give us a loss um, for obvious reasons. Um, so it's something that should keep in mind. Depending on the data set, you will not have this problem at all. Depending on the subject you're dealing with, since we're, we're basically killing uh, characters, it was more drastic than if we were, for example, doing uh, card generation for a card game. Um, but yeah, this is one, one of the problems. The other problem is when you just oppose information and you can create uh, lies about the original information. So for example, you can have data that is incorrectly put because the actual original data was incorrect, or you can have them uh, creating misinformation because of the justice position of, doing, of two different sorts of data that separate are completely uh, inoffensive. So in the first case, when the data is incorrect, um, you can have a situation like what we have with uh, Germany in the game. Um, if you go on Wikipedia and you look at Germany, it's going to tell you that it's a country, that it's a place, but it's also going to tell you that it's a people. And because our system would uh, prioritize people, it thought that Germany was a person. So it would create this character called Germany, uh, who lived in the house of Germany, who was in a city called Germany, and you just go there and you would interact and hang out with this flag of Germany. It was just standing there. Um, so that was perfectly fine, it was silly. Or for example, on the case that someone put uh, a Harry Potter character, it created Voldemort inside the game. And Voldemort's uh, image was of a bus with a giant Voldemort face on it, like it has been uh, magically transformed. So these things are fine and funny and cute. Um, but when you have information that can be offensive to someone, it's another problem. So we like to use Albert Einstein as an example um, because everyone knows him and, well, he's already dead. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy. He has a lot of connections and so a lot of information about him. Um, so at some point when we were tweaking with the system and we put Albert Einstein, it created a character based on Adolf Hitler, which is already bad. Um, but we were, okay, let's test this. When we would go into the game and we found him, um, Adolf Hitler, and he would go talk to him, he would start um, saying that he was suspicious of another character because that other character was Jewish. Um, and that was the moment where we deleted the game and started putting more constraints into the system. Because um, it is possible from Wikipedia to see how the relation between Albert Einstein and um, Jewish people and Adolf Hitler would come up. It is understandable from the original data. But it's not something that we, as the developers of the system, want the, wanted the system to make. Um, and that's not meant that it can't be done in a tasteful way. It's meant that the system was not ready for doing that in a way that wasn't offensive. Um, so our approach to solve that problem is to cut it off. Um, so it's just important to make sure that your system is not completely horrifying at times. Um, and if it is just, well, fix it, tell me. Um, that said, there's a lot of interesting things that interesting things that can uh, come up from using data um, to fit ECG systems. There's a lot that is usually not meant, uh, not thought out by us, either because we're full of biases of ourselves and we expect things to be in a certain way. Um, so it's, it's a nice experiment. And it, you don't have to use to generate the whole game like we did. Um, if without the data, data agent wouldn't exist because it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a purpose. Um, but you can generate something as small as um, quests or items or, I don't know, tapestries. 
something small inside a game. Um, you can also experiment with data in several ways. So if you have data that's um, numerical, for example, nothing stops you from um, using the data to influence, influence other um, aspects of the game. They are not necessarily numeric based. Um, on the same way, if you have information from a Wikipedia, for example, you don't actually need to create text in the game. You can create uh, characters or images or whatever based on that information. Um, and it's important to realize that absurd things will happen, especially if you're messing with more than one type of data, if you're doing something that is um, deviating a lot from the original content. Um, but that's fine, and sometimes it's, it's, it's not only interesting, but it's also a lot of fun. Um, finally, there's also the question of offline versus online. You, nothing stops you from getting a spreadsheet from the data source and using it locally. Um, there is a series of problems with getting the information and transforming it um, in real time. And it's, it's often, um, it, it can be um, more advantage to um, play it safe and do it offline or with a smaller data set, um, creating the data set before actually generating. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can remove from the data um, that players will fill out. So for example, once um, we play past this with three women who are not really, um, who wouldn't play games as often as, um, well, other people, me, I play games a lot. Um, and there, they were having so much fun by creating this meta narrative in their head of um, the characters having affairs and um, dubious motives and lying, even though they weren't. The data was pretty simple, it, it, but it was much more interesting for them to create this narrative among themselves. Um, but um, also, it's important to be careful with what we create and make sure that you're not doing something that can harm other. Um, so with that said, there are several sources of information online, um, such as Wikipedia, there's the Open Movie Database. I'm going to put those uh, slides online after this talk. And well, feel free to reach out to me um, if you have any questions or Whatever. Um, and you can also play data agent um, on this link um, on each AO. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Silence. This is really different from presenting on a real place like on an actual physical space because then at least I could look at all of you. Um, <laughs> so I have no idea what's happening. Um, so um, Carlyle is asking, what do you think of the aspect of machine learning analysis and creation of data? Um, I think it can be a great tool to generate data. The problem with machine learning is um, it's super powerful. You can create so much with it. You can do so much with it. Um, but it can be, at times, inaccessible unless you have um, more computer power. Or you can create things that you don't have control over. Um, and techniques are getting better at that. But it's just it, it creates a new layer of difficulty between what you're generating and what um, you're trying to constrain the generator at all. That said, it's, it's, I think it's a great tool to, to, to create new things and to um, actually create them as well. Nothing stops you from using uh, something like an um, adversarial model, for example, to create your own patients. Um, I hope that answered the question. Um, 
Gonzalez asks, how do you let the players contact you when situations like this were just happen? Or if some data is wrong? Um, it can be something as easy as a Twitter presence. Um, you can just, they can just contact you from there and then you can um, either patch the game and submit a new version or if the game is online, um, modify the generator. Um, in our case, I think people can also contact us on each aisle. Um, and then a lot of playtesting before actually making this live is a good idea. Um, uh, how many purges did you have to go through to find a good story like the Albert Einstein one? Ah, many, many. There were many. Um, so the thing is, if you generate 10 of them, the first one you're gonna see will probably be interesting because it's gonna be the first time you're seeing the data. Um, but the second time might already have too many similarities just because, uh, for example, the evolutionary strategy may choose the same people just because that is the optimal solution um, that makes the same set of suspects. So it's more a matter of how replayable this game is, which is not as much, um, not in the sense of you're playing the same mystery. It's more replayable in the sense of you're playing uh, with different victims to see what kind of uh, things come up. Um, what is the best numerical data set in your recommendations? I don't have one, one best numerical one. I know that a lot of people use uh, government data. Um, so I think it's data.gov.org, maybe. Um, it has a lot of data sets on information about uh, demographic and um, economic, and it's, it can come up with really interesting things. Um, I've seen people use it for um, generating monopoly uh, burnouts, actually. Uh, so yeah. mm. I'm curious how and why did you start working on this data games? Um, I was starting my PhD and I needed to find a subject. Um, and it was either this or something else, which was interesting but less interesting than messing around with data, I guess. Um, so yes, that's 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 the answer. Um, have you done more with RDF and semantic web than just getting data from Wikipedia? I ask because that's one area of research that I'm working on. I have not actually. Um, I would be super interested in doing that, but I haven't at this point. Um, I've seen people do some really crazy things with RDF for visual visualization. Um, and I think that to take that a step further to um, gain content is, it's, a really interesting um, research area. Right. Um, just looking to see if anything, there's anything else. Um, so did I maybe did I left any question um, an answer in some way? Um, also feel free to just contact me either on Slack or on uh, the Twitter feed. Um, and, oh, question, uh, what is the most difficult step if you were to get it released? That's hard. Um, <laughs> so at first we didn't have any of the systems in place because this was a big game. Um, there was a lot of engineering at first just to get, um, the data and to transform it in all sorts of ways. Um, and then it was more of a problem of actually uh, improving the game design. As with every game, you're gonna spend a lot of time tweaking things to make the game feel right. Um, and then we're, we're, when you're working with data, you can't just do things as you want. Sometimes the data has to dictate a little bit of what you can and cannot do. Um, so yes, um, either building engineering for getting the data and transforming it or making sure that the game design fits the data and it's fun to play. 
um, open data sets are usually not interrelatable, um, for example, Wikipedia and OSM. So how could we, for example, build actual word scenes using the clear subtleties of the story? Um, I think you need to add an extra level of understanding to the system. So the system has to, um, from a story point, um, figure out what subtleties you want. So um, at first, is the story actually data uh, dependent? If so, do you have a meta narrative for the story? Does it have to follow a specific uh, set beat and so on? And then the system can um, figure out at specific parts of the story, for example, or on a general level, um, what it can and cannot do. And you can use something like um, machine learning, uh, natural language processing. Um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of techniques that tackle um, figuring out tags and uh, sentiment analysis and so on for the stories. Um, I think that's hard just because um, it involves a lot of smaller problems that you have to tackle first in order to do something um, like that. 